B5s, has that AoE CC. That is something that you really do need when you're playing against Blitzcrank. If you just have single target pick, Tom Kench is so powerful against that. You know, when, when Syndra is looking to 100-0 someone, when Viego is looking to dive in, you know, it's less can they, you know, get the push. I do think that Calista can get the push. It's more, oh, his APA is in trouble here, potentially. Out of the week's going to get him away. Palafox has the summoners available. He flushes for it. Autos! And first blood to Palafox to kick it chat in the mid lane returns. Um, Palafaker showing up here to world. Solo kill on Orianna. To say one thing. Either that or he's gone for a quick bathroom break because <laughs> yeah. he's been in there for a while. And he's still there. You can see on the minimap while Contracts is going straight to the top side. Summit has a flash fail, but it's matched here. Permafrost is out. And even though Summit gets out of there, Dokla's in. Oops. Oh, hell yeah. Well, again, make it a little bit fun. TL playing with a 3v2 for now. But Palafox, that shockwave available as a threat. The center up from downtown from FBI helps them get the Herald. The Team Liquid looking for something on the exit path. However, with Palafox with no mana, maybe they feel confident to do so with the jump in from Big Dokes again! Piosic is out, but for the time being, looking for the reset with the help of his team. TL still in deep no man's land, and Igna come from behind. Someone has to flash away. In FBI has joined in as well. NRG are pouncing on them, and TL bit off way too much. As APA, he might have the flash, but to burn it soon feels like the reality. Tongue lash out over the wall, gobbled up. What did he taste like? A free kill. We've seen in NRG in the past, these map movements are so clutch and struggles. So the fact that Dokla's as far ahead is problematic. All in coming through from bot side though to interrupt the Dignar with the tongue lash, the long range from FBI already. Gone in trouble. Again, dinner time, not yet, as he narrowly avoids. Oh! Survives, but again, chips keep falling as the action doesn't stop. NRG keeping the pace going with a flick back. APA is one hit wonder away. Contract. To deal with a center who's outranging you heavily. You're going to have to deal with the potential shockwaves uh -huh. and contracts mid again. Kill number four. APA, yip, yip, back to the base. Yeah, Piercer grabbing around. TL, I think, are feeling the pressure. They know they need to make some sort of a dive happen. They're going to TP. They finally get Piercer with something in the game. He flushes, but misses FBI. Ignar doesn't have the saving grace with the heartbreak around. The ulti flash is still alive, but finally, there's a reset. Over to Hang the on team. a minute. I've got something left at home. 2.8k as the oven's now turned off and Shelly's going back out to adventure, but the eye taken by the man in jungle from NRG. He's also separated, but the eye now exposes Core J. There's going to be the trade-off with a shot. At the very least, however, when we talked about Summit earlier on, we know this man for a great lane, or at least this game in a different lane. Know where they win, and they really have shown just how good they can be. FEI stepped up massively in playoffs. Palafox stepped up so big in playoffs. And this team that was so up and down in the regular season, it was a team that always challenged the best teams, but always lose to the worst, showed us some consistency for once and showed us just how good they can be. And now they are starting to get some of that recognition. Yeah, they've really nailed down the play style, haven't they? And again, they get consistency comes through as contract dives through. The man who hasn't been at Worlds since 2017 is leading the charge on this ball. With the teleport in from Dokla, though, they make it a five-man bot side. They've left Summer towards mid, but they've got the pick. They've got a turret under their eyes, and NRG stay as the unit. And this could be double tower here. I think they should just walk this in. They're trying to kill it off. Very quickly over the wall. There's a counter-strike, but unstoppable. Separates, makes it a 1v1, but Summon is now squishy as all hell. Dokla says no problem whatsoever. I mean, they're just drawing so much pressure down towards bot side. They knew Piyoshik is bot, so they're just going to force this. They don't have that much damage, but now Douglas, he's supposed to get there to finish it. This, I think APA bitten off way too much. He dies even under Tara. Piyoshik is still there in full vision while NRG have a free smite and look for the kill. Core JJ with the all in, but the numbers advantage there. Igna saves FBI. Meanwhile, Dokla dies downstairs, but look at contracts on Dion. Trying to run away, there's some spears in, but as he gets separated out, TL trying to get numbers advantage. Contracts will eventually die. It's the best fight we've seen so far from Team Liquid, but Summit needs to go down, and NRG have their targets in order. Core JJ and Yana all the Can't count this team out. Second Dragon for Team Liquid as well. Worth mentioning, while well, NRG have the inside track towards well, You me. have to be worried about it from the TL side. Like, oh, they could actually instill this, but now they're going for the engage. Instead, the pick is there. Great again. Igna going to chase this one up as Contracts with the ulti onto APA is huge, but the Shockwave! I know why they call him Palafaker. I can like feel Nail. They're going to continue on while Dokla just deals with the bottom side, but eventually, and surely, Baron will go down to NRG. The big major objective here in this game is at least Piotrzyk is trying to trade this off again, but Dokla won't exactly let him. Another stun to bite the dust. The Heartbreaker is up, but it was massive. 
finds the three-man shockwave there. I don't really see how he can ever get through them in a quick in a quick way. That's right, that Callista point in the game versus Tarn versus Sedge versus Jax even. Yeah. Right, about to bite the dust as TL has stretched thin. Yeah, TL might be going for it though. Core JJ looking for the flank, but the tower is going to be going down, so it's too late. Yon in trouble. NRG pulling the play instead. Insta JJ hasn't been home in years. I mean, this guy level nine. He's been sitting out of base, and I think another couple of minutes will do him well. The slowdown, easy kill. And one for FBI while Dokla is just playing his own game. Teleport gonna be burning in. Okay, this time he's got back up on the Piosic. The Grandmaster's might is there, but Palafox now with a rabbit on death cap. You gotta take him even more seriously. Yeah, he is ready to go. Hit 16, gets the death cap. And that is often the death nail against Oriana here. You get so ridiculously strong at this point. Dokla pressuring, they're pressuring through mid as well. Teal just don't have the wave clear. Lista, without a hurricane, has almost no wave clear to speak of, and you can't step up because you're so outranged, so it's all up to APA, but APA is very far behind. Contracts has been his bane this game. One, two, and eight, but I feel like Contracts to me is, is just dominating this game. He's yep. been so on point with the ulties. Great to see him back at Worlds. It's been so long, but this performance putting hope in NRG fans. The root comes down. His opponent, that is a ridiculous disadvantage. Oh, yeah. And you're looking over at Jan. Yeah, great, he's got two items, but Contracts is closing in on three. Dokla has three. Palafox has three. You know, even Ignor With, again, almost that 10k gold lead, but at least here. Four top. Trying to force it out. Scatter of the week doesn't connect, though. Dokla's out. Five members now, all moving in, or rather four, as you said. Still waiting for someone to join in, but Dokla's taking them all on the crash down from Core JJ. Nothing's connected. As Dokla flashes out, he's ready to go back in. The stun follows through. Contracts now joins in. They tried to take on Big Dokes, but you don't say his name without getting the Dokes back. TL running for the hills, and NRG, every single movement has been world class. He has sent four, but you should have brought five. Big Dokes fights his <laughs> way out of it. He's going to survive an energy crushing TL. Now 19 to four is the kill score, pushing down mid. And this is a team, Energy, that plays with emotion, that plays with confidence. When they're ahead, they often really get ahead. So it's such a big win for them. And we'll see if they can close it out right here, right now. 31 minutes onto the Nexus turret to teleport to seal the deal. APA still dead for a bit. And look, Piosic is going to try and do what he can here on the 2 0 Viego. But Team Liquid now in fear of a KT dumb one possibility. But more importantly, NRG keeping themselves in a strong spot. One and one here to open up day two of Swiss at Worlds. And NRG should start being respected with more performances like this as they run onto the fountain to finish in style. To play that way. You know, yes, you can have Lee Sin as this aggressive pick, but now you have Lee Sin kick for disengage. Yep. You have Alistar knockback for disengage. You have a zero for disengage. You have Tristana buster shot for disengage. Uh, right, like Dominus maybe not the way pushing in, but it's thinned out. Zeka still playing dangerously. And Sven is also going to be spotted on this control ward. But Dragon, as early as you'd like on a Lee Sin, taken by Tarzan. Yeah, nicely done there. And Fudge out there by LNG, you know, was a little bit of an edge. Oh. They're going to go for Syndra. And Briz divide the glide. And see you later. The kickback with the Sonic Wave doesn't connect. It slows down the play. But Scout with his range again. Oh, no. Yes, but he's going to be zoned off another wave as Sven was forced to use his ulti and retreat on... On mid lane. Trying to turn into a dive. Dominus is there. One versus two. Zika is going to pop the ulti. The counter strike now run out. He's out of mana as well. Permafrost laid with the own ulti. Well done by C9. But the problem is the bottom side. Relaxing on this kill because they're going to get the full tower. Yeah. That is a big deal to get that kill. Ember Zerker barely survives on bot side. LNG has been pressuring heavily through bot. MS did get down there to cover, which is good, but it does mean he's going to be losing farm. Scout pushes in, takes another plate. So more and more plates have been going the way of LNG, but it's a slight lead for Cloud9. And they're looking really very even with LNG through 13 minutes. So credit to them. This is a very great timing. He's good on the fingers today, but will mean they lose out on the mid turret with that burnt down. Yeah, and honestly, this is just such a win for LNG. Cloud9 go to take Herald. Harold gives you the opportunity to get a tower, right? And while you're getting that, 
They take the mid tower, they take the bot tower. They dragon, guess what? I'm gonna take your tier one for free. You get the dragon, but it is gonna be C9 taking that, dropping Herald on bot side. So they wanna try to see if they can push for it. definitely in terms of blabber, but I think C9's reactions in the mad game yesterday, yeah. even today here against LNG. Thank you for your patience. C9 come back from the corner break and hit the Baron. Zek has no TP and they saw him bot. Oh, They're starting engaged. with action. Scout with a three man and he's dead. Oh! C9 come back and all of a sudden, game goes back. Oh! Hong is knocked in the pit. He's flashing out. Well, the Baron held on for now. LNG down a member, down their crucial member, and stuck in a 4v5 with Zika coming towards mid. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah, Zika is moving up. They're going to try to go for it, but Tarzan, they got to get uh, out. They got to get out. onto LNG. The kick away disengaged, but Baron still going down. LNG will lose out in Cloud9. Oh, get them into the pit. They got to get Not going to be eluded in. LNG will move to Soul Point. Well, C9 with their Baron are going to open up mid. Yeah, C9, you know, really getting punished pretty heavily there. They wanted to go for this little chip play on a Tarzan, but the amount of displacement in this team is massive. What is Hong doing? Oh, he's just jumping in. Oh, he just killed him himself. He burst it out. Huh? Between him and the rest of the team, but that looked weird. As they're trying to dive, Scout flashes away. Hang on, C9 to unleash. Gala, three hitting for the time being, but not too much damage. Just the flashing from Tarzan to kick. They go get the three, man! C9 running out the turret in control, but LNG can never be discounted from a deficit. They fire again and again! And, and, and Zika coming from both sides. Flash kick. The scatter was there in time, but it just didn't matter as the flash in from Zika. Three yep. men. Fudge had the base to answer, so Cloud9 were confident to actually there take that 4v4. You know, Gaul is pushing up mid. They can't go back, so he just bought a stopwatch, and so did MS. Here comes the TP. They're going to look for the deep flank. It's a big one as well. Could be game changing from Fudge. The factor there, but he needs to get in because Gaul is jumping in on the sidelines. But you're running through. The king of 80 carries in North America. Might take one down in China. Fudge helps out. Big shutdown. LNG lose a man, but trade one. And now Fudge targeted and Tarzan to finish the kill. Zika flashes, and the rookie from the LPL should not be given Jax ever again. Scout on the Azir follows that same train of thought. As C9, it looks so good until it wasn't. Cloud9 try to go for the aggressive play here, but a little bit disjointed. But comes up this super long flanking angle. They do get in the Baisa and the Rakan. They can follow up on this. They can get in there on the back line. But Fudge was never really a part of the fight. MNS was finals never. Finals against JDG, capitalized well here against Cloud9. The same again. The same against Fnatic yesterday in their early game. That's what makes LNG so dangerous. The scout has to flash away, at least Blabber forcing out with the Glacial Prison. But the rest of LNG using the Baron buff and this hard push that's going to come from Gala to open up the base. Zika jumping in. I mean, Fudge has experience, but Zika has the LPL. Yeah, absolutely. And just. A lot of these champions now on Cloud9 have been well and truly outscaled. We've got level 18 Jax, you know, working towards his fourth item. We've got Scout working towards his death cap. He's level 17. MNS is two levels down, doesn't even have his third item. He's so far behind. Berserker as well, way behind the curve here. Cloud9 just don't really have the damage, well, not even to mention the soul. They're trying so hard to kill Zika. He just thinking about jumping back in. Makes it so hard again as he en ends up doing exactly that. Yeah, they just can't hurt him. I mean, you basically need Berserker there to kill anyone at this point. And then what do you lose because of it? Exactly, you lose everything. Well, Infernal Soul to boot as well. He jumps up, but Berserker, that might be the last mistake you make here in this game. LNG moments away from being the first team to 2-0 here in the Swiss stage. To be on match point, as it were, to go to the best of threes. Zika has teleport. He faces away, trying to engage onto LNG. And Sven had a great early game, but no longer onto Gala. Berserker at least trying his heart out as he buys some time. Tarzan with no Sonic Wave, but Scout still finds him on the back end. While C9 to pick apart the pieces, eventually get Zika. But what is the cost? What is the charge? LNG still here strong as into the base. They're not stopping. They don't care. Oh. Holdy whiff. Scout dodges away. Blaver running for his life. It's a long haul here as Cloud9 look to keep them from thwarting their chances to move to safety. C9 getting buffed away though by Scout Azir, who gets seven kills this time around. 18 kills in total in two days. Our MVP of the split continues to perform. Again, a couple of questions to answer of Mad as BDS lock themselves in. You yeah, it is really, really interesting to see uh, where they're going to be flexing things around. You know, I am definitely expecting to be Belveth jungle, though. Okay. Uh, you know, LeBron has no flash, so he's in danger as well. Shayo, how do you get out of this one above and beyond and start knocking away with the Royal Maelstrom? It's an easy Stronger. 
And I just really struggle to see what Sheo is going to be able to get done sure. in this one. He's got to rely so much on Crowny, so much on Nuke and Adam to really kind of turn to form. Um, because when he is at his best, he's just an incredible team fighter. Well, LeBrov might be caught out. We'll hold on that because LeBrov, he burned his flash before in the lane and the 2v2 of Matter coming alive. Bahili and Elioya, they spot him with the sweeper. Oh, it's a beautiful lens. Hill is saying right back into the same position, but it's countered this time. LeBrov's in, but a three-man magnet storm, and it's going to be banquet time in a second. Hill is saying gets out, but Elioya still not able to get his damage down on his Kraken Slayer as Chasey. Teleports in, but as a mini nah. That's like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was 14. Mad running. Unfortunately, for the kill did go to Lebra, but they're getting active on the map. They try to look for this play. Carsey though, looking for Crowny. Oh, Crowny, the roots there, instant cleanse, but is it enough? Hang on a minute. Elioya oh. jumps on in, but Carsey had to solo kill Crowny. Meanwhile, though, it turns the trade as the feathers are about to fly out. But Shio running in, doesn't matter. Nuke gets the kill. Meanwhile, on the top oh, side. No ulti on Renekton. Now, finally, the Meganar comes through. Chasey versus Adam. It's been about Chatham, but now about 14. Probably <laughs> still really jazzed. He really was. <laughs> I mean, I was watching a documentary recently. Uh, maybe not the best analogy, but you guys get the point. It's still... Right, it's cool. And when you look at the MasterCard lane economy snapshot that's just popped up, Nuke has a gold lead over Nisky. Last not taking away Shea, he's just trying to get his camps, but hello, my family. Look at that. Harold, three of her children, El Yoya. <laughs> I don't know where Belveth fits in. Maybe it's the grandmother, but that helps get the turret down as shove me back. That's Hilla saying. Down he goes. 145 and your team in such a strong point. I'd rather you die and have the flash for the engage. Well, I'd rather see this fight play out first up. Meganar about to run out, but into Adam. Can he deal with this one? No minion wave there. Chasey ult misses. Oh, Kazi running oh. in, flashed on. Chatham, welcome back as the feathers fly out. He'll still be rooted down. Chasey gets the kill, but he made him work hard for it. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, maybe a little bit of sun in their eyes on that one. Oh, Chasey yeah. a swing and a miss on the first couple. Definitely made it look a bit messy, but Adam's too far behind. He can't capitalize, even though he played it about as well as he possibly could have from that position. Really ambitious to think you're going to be able to get onto that blast cone. So maybe hurting now. I wish we'll he had that flash. Again. Hilly, what's going on, brother? I tell you what, I'm he has no flash. He lost his ulti, but now crowning the wall, no sums. And it's going to mean Matt should be able to easily move in for this dragon here. LeBrov even getting chunked down, and Chasey's getting I mean, a Meganar. Stride breaker here on that Royal Maelstrom. LeBrov might be the first reset. Kazi's just solo taking down Crowny, who had nothing, and now it's an endless banquet again on the back end. Well, the bump away from LeBrov won't matter because the nuke down from Chasey is massive. Have another one on the house because Mad are back in charge. They are crushing through in this fight. They're going to get the dragon in. Shao oh. spotted now. If he dies, this could potentially oh. be Baron. Oh no, he lost the red. Ellie heard what I said about him. I am sorry. It'll <laughs> never happen again. Shao is just like this game. Could not get any worse. Right, guys? Right, right. Well, surely he gets out of this. Oh, absolutely not. It's going to be a feast for the eyes, at least for El Yoya, to pick up yet another kill. Slap him down. Shao. No way. No, 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 no way. He's not getting out. He's not getting out. He's at least buying <laughs> time. He dies in the end, but that was so crazy. much damage, and there's no way for BDS to challenge. They're already down 5K, and I think this is almost the death knell here for BDS in this one, as you're now massively ahead, have the Baron, you're already winning in sides, and now you're 5-0. Nar gets a Baron buff. Adam almost caught out off the back end of that as well. But further to your point, 7,000 the lead. Hexgate's used to try and get picks from maybe a bit of extra greed that above and below not connecting. But El Yoya, a level 13 Belveth with Stride Breaker. He's not taking no for an answer with the Baron power play, which has only just begun. He'll move up. He doesn't care about backing and will take more from the map as mad. We're talking about it yesterday, not proactive, not much going on, but hey, as they overstep towards the top side, Chasey about to drop down, Megana almost there, El Yoya, big knockup, but it's simply to try and buy some time as the shutdown goes to BDS, but it's still mad in the lead. It is mad in a heavy, heavy lead, but at the very least, Nuke again gets that shutdown, and he already has his death cap, so going very aggressive build, got a massive those plays. 
But the problem is, Matt is pushing up all of the waves here, and they're going to take that bot lane tier two. Chasey pushes in mid. You can see Hilly in this case, and in some cases, even surpassing the solo laners oh, yeah. in terms of experience. As Adam is still at that level 14. It's another. And LeBrav are basically a one way trip. If they engage, yep. you're both just going to die. These champions are so squishy, and Matt is just burning this down oh. incredibly fast. Can BDS even get here in time? I mean, they're going to try at the very least the last hand to keep themselves alive and move to a one for one. Matt are not overexerting themselves on the barrel. Though they're not going to take it a flip. Look at Top Wave. Thank you, observers. Mad are playing with time so well. Look at the wave state. A bit of macro to throw that out there. Is that they're going to look at it once again? Yeah, they see Crowning pushing up mid. He's going for that tier one. So Mad are just going to start the dragon again. Pull him to them. Now, Yuya is getting low, though. He is tanking this up for a long time. Boy, he jumps in Shao a little bit early. Niski not going to get to go in, but it's stolen. BDS keep themselves alive. The Frozen Tomb's out as well. As Kazi has to get out the back of the pit, but El Yoy is down. No banquet for him. Adam gets a kill, but is quickly traded off as well. As Nuke is the shining light. BDS all hail the mid laner. Oh, he misses. Miss. Miss says Kazi with the quick sidestep is massive. Mad still went out, and I must pray now to Kazi. He has death cap, but look at Chase. He's on the side, and he is charging up that Narbar. BDS have come so far for this point. Glacial Path not taken yet again. El Yoya is going to be a strong jungle dragon. Indeed, it opens up. But Hilly, you are not silly. You're in charge. And now with you launching them back, BDS still trying to find the fight. Mad somehow getting bursted down. Adam takes a while. But look at this. Num, 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 num. It's an endless banquet once again. Mad have done it. They get the fight, and I think they're going to get the game here. They wipe them off the map. They TP to bot. They crush the team fight. They've got the soul, and they're coming for their first win. It all comes together from the early game. A couple of hiccups along the road, but Mad moving for their first win here in the Swiss stage. BDS have worked so hard to get here, but Mad don't care. That's LEC's third seed. Doubters be damned. Here, Mad stand. Something to be really happy about. At least, about. look, Razork on something that can set up his team. At the very least, as Gam, they finish out their draft with the Jace going towards mid. I know you talked about the flex potential, but as we're expecting, Kiaya in that top side on the Cassante. The same supports today as they are so impactful across the map, but they still don't see him. He's holding out. He then goes to the engage, sets up for Levi. It quickly becomes a three versus two. Make that four versus two. Razork's abandoned and Gam, just like we said, Razork can't do a thing while. Well, Gam use their pressure bot side and just take the first dragon of the game. Early game going exactly how this team has come back in form as Razork is trying to get in position to find something. Bot side, no Slater, flash. you're right, won't find it. The Magnus storms in and Fnatic strike true. It's Noah who succeeds. Well, Gam, as you highlighted before, CS leads were already making it competitive as Oscar Rinnan might change my mind. He's running into Fog of War, at least for the jungle gank, but one versus two. Renekton ain't afraid of that as Razork here to save the day. Welcome back to my team, brother. I don't abandon my top laners, but Kiaya slices and dices, and he ain't even playing the Renekton. The blades are out as Budget Irelia now looks for a flip back. The Natova strikes aren't out as Razork to cover all the lanes of approach, right? You can't put a lane ward and a river brush and the tri brush, all these different spots, but now... Grimby. Caddy's here, though. Buddy has to get out of there. You're right. Caddy changes the, the landscape of the fight, but Slater repositions and takes him out. Pallet's here and Levi's here. Trimby is kind of by himself, but I'm not sure if they want to come into the play. I guess not. I mean, again, Pallet could have. As top side, we look again. There's the all-out. Oscar Rinnan has the Dominus available, but we look towards mid as well. Who's going to get the solo kill? Who's going to get the fight? Instead, it's Fnatic pulling the trigger. What Kiaya solo kills Oscar Rinnan. He didn't the have that Gorge Ringer completed until he died. Yep. So he just goes for the all-in, knows he has the better buy. Levi in the area, but they are clearly too late, so will not be able to continue stacking up those dragons. But now going to look for a fight here. Here they go. Gage up to the back. Pallet misses so, but still gets quickness. Noah untouched on the backside, but it's Trimby tanking up as Levi just wants that engage. He's already ulted out as the feathers stop the play from happening further. But Fnatic's bottom lane aren't out oh, of the Carty's woods yet. hunting too. They're going to try and stay under this turret. As you said, Carty wants to get down, but Razork's interrupting him as well. So in the meanwhile, Trimby and Noah say, look the other way. We want to get out of there, but Pallet won't let them interrupt them from Trimby. You're all right, but Noah, as he flashes away, it's Slater who rolls on in. Fnatic's bottom lane half are dead, but Humanoids now joined in as Levi's getting tagged down, but there's not enough damage yet, and Slater knows it. Running forward with the Umbral Glaive, it's not enough. 
Ignore my last comment, they say. As Fnatic's mid laner still fires away, but Cardi's the Jace. And in the early game, he reigns supreme as Humanoid flashes away, but this is chaos. How are Fnatic winning it? At the end of the day, you close your eyes, you open them again. Oh! Everybody's dying, and I have no clue what to hear. Watch as he actually flashes forward to finish off Humanoid, and then Humanoid just goes in aggressive to actually create that space. He just slides past him. But then Kati, great job there, finds the angle onto Noah. Razor unable to block that shot blast. Oh, let's do it again, eh? Look. Why not? I know I'm from the LPL. Oh, here comes Razark. They're actually getting flanked on the flank. Not expecting the callus. You're right. Who's really flanking who? Who's the ambulance going to be Here's Noah. For? Everyone's from here. Fnatic. As Noah runs on in, he gets ultied out. Levi, beautiful. But Humanoid swoops and boops. Dacta would approve. As Fnatic have already found the opening kill on Dakati. They're now playing front to back with Trimby rolling up, with Noah rolling in, with the shutdown rolling out. Gam are sent packing as Fnatic bring them to the charge. Fnatic crushed that fight. They have the TPs. And Gam was trying to set up for this, this tower dive, but they just spent way too much time doing it. It was so obvious that they were going to be going for this play that Fnatic had more than enough time to actually come over and preempt the play. Kati has separate. been very competitive up to this moment, but that one is is definitely one they want back. Well, they're going to try and find this pick to at least equal purchases. You know, you're going to see Tabby's getting bought up. Trimby has Tabby's. I already talked with the early seekers for Humanoid. They're going to be, you know, not just like fully stacking armor, but they're going to have armor, and it's going to make the lethality that much less useful. Is Kiaya in trouble? Jump in from Razzle. Picture this. It's a magnet storm. North and south react, and opposites attract. Levi's out as the feathers fly down, but it's a follow-up from Razor. Like a razor, he shaves his way through the enemy jungle as Fnatic are opening up mid lane. And all of a sudden, this early game is swept aside. We move It's Renekton. Even if you are one of these tanky members, if you are fully stuck... Fnatic, again, getting away with a bit of murder here. Yeah, they're looking good here. They commit the double ulti onto Humanoid. They don't even get him the flash. He just ulti responds, but Oscar in and way Dominus too far. In. Cardi's going to punish him. I feel like he might die, but it is Renekton moments as the auto, the range there. Cardi flashes in. And but a shut shutdown given over. Mm -hmm. So moments like that are how Gam get back into this game and how Gam start taking control back from Fnatic. Things still look good for FNC, but for now, the picks over the wall and the Humanoid, but trying to take him down is such a mission. Three members up there, but the TP from Oscar in and the rest of Fnatic converging in. Gam are gonna regret this play. And with Oscar's return to the stage, it's a big old g'day from the top laner on Fnatic. A triple kill over to the Croc. And FNC will not go right. and on to the Baron. It's still all about FNC. Yeah, Fnatic are going to get it all. Can, Fnatic to have it yeah. with how this game's just transitioning. And we saw the win probability powered by AWS. It was looking right now as Kati has just been able to kind of farm up some of these towers. But yeah. now Humanoid responds and good look for a play. Looking for it. Oscar ends over the wall as well. Kati knows he has no way out. Humanoid almost dies, but Kati's burning down on the Shot wrong side. Over the wall, maybe? It's all about the range, isn't it? As Oscar Inan looks to take a solid kill of his own. This guy guy has been out for far too long and he wants people to remember his name. Cut these in the wrong direction. Humanoid makes it out of there and you know what? I smell meat. Crikey, it's another double. Yeah, and they're taking the base at the same time there. Kati could have just finished his base, but Alex to actually go for the kill. And now Humanoid's here. He's teeping in, and I think they can. It's all in with the rail. Shattering strike on top of the Magnus Storm. The feathers are out. Noah is free. Firing Gam all of a sudden. We're in a position of losing in under 25 minutes. Kiaya in the Cassante won't be unstoppable for long. And Europe raised the flags high. You've beaten the VCS. You're going to move to 1-1. One and one. And Gan don't know what hit them. They want to play early game. Ha! You live in the early game with Fnatic as they move to one and one here on day two of the Swiss stage at Worlds. Nicely done. A lot of great farm potential here with this pick, but it's a pick that can go splat, as we often say with Kha'Zix. If you do fall behind against this much CC, this much damage to the Orianna, and now it's going to be Aatrox that tackles the run. Enemy support is also going to come down into the mid lane, or come up, I should say, as now Karia is here. He's got a combo going as the rest of Gen Z is trying to come out and punish this, but it's actually T1 who are now in a 3v2 situation. Peanut has to flash away. Even Goomas join in the fight, and T1 are going to start this one off. But wanted to be a little bit of a juicy target here to keep owner a little bit occupied, try to force him out so they could identify for sure he was up there. They didn't have that control ward. It was T1's to invade the jungle against the Kha'Zix here. 
And a little play down on the bottom side of Flash away at the same time. But we got Owner looking for the solo, and he's just going to dunk onto Peanut as Toby. Also I think this is the right choice here. You are down a dragon. You don't know what the solo is going to be, but all of your mid game advantages aren't going to matter if you. A little bit later on. Uh, speaking of which, Gumiusi seems to have no idea that this Rumble is in the bush, and now he's getting flashed on. Guma will be able to flash away from this one, and there's the ultimate just ticking down. And Doran. Power is spiking so hard right now. They're only up 700 gold here, but the items they have on the carries they have are just so deadly. They're going to actually take this turret, maybe more. Hayes is just eating the damage. I mean, he just sits on the ball, and Faker says, thank you very much. I get those first few without a real fight as Doran once again <laughs> looking for an opportunity. Wait, this is the same spot. I saw this already, but it was uh, Kaisa. But Faker says, I am different. I can challenge you. And that he will. He's just holding on, waiting for the one second for his shockwave. Doesn't even need it. As Toby going to come in, dodging the shuriken as Faker. But he's in a lot of trouble. He's alone against three. And now Zeus is on the run to light, trying to continue on this one. Pays running into the rest of T1. But they will just be able to get away by running to their turret. So Gen G only able to pick up Faker on the backside of that one. They'll grab a turret here as well, and Zayas is going to need to back away. Pay's going to take that one out a lot. Not really able to get too much other than Faker and some low health bars. They decide to go for a reset. They have two Drake jungle. They are just going to push T1 out, and in fact, they will get this top tier one turret. Meanwhile, Zeus alone on the bottom side. Take a look at the level difference as well. Uh, just two levels ahead in that top lane, but also take a look at the total damage as Faker, he started the game in the lead and now he is still holding on to the reins of this one. So we are just trading turrets here. It's an LCK classic. Don't fight, just hit those objectives. <laughs> Rift Herald, of course, going to help you win that race, though, as we trade enters. We might see an attempt to deny this. Oh, boy, Peanut, he's just sitting on it. And Faker. You know that Guma can fall back to that mid turret is OK, Faker. Yeah, Faker in a lot of trouble here. Chovy on the chase. It's really difficult to get away from this. Akali he hits the Shuriken as the Shockwave lands. Does not have gone for some resets, but T1 barreling into the river. It looks like they do want to challenge this in the bottom side. Delight is a bit caught out, but he is recon, and now he's going back in. He's looking for the big engage with that Rumble Ultimate over the top. That's going to be the Kai'Sa just gone in this fight before it even began as Jovi just running down the top side alongside of Doran, and that is a clean ace to the side of Genji. That's Delight's recon. The damage, he goes for the charm here, gets the knockup, and then the follow-up damage is layered through from Doran. Look at his positioning. Rumble under no threat whatsoever. Faker not in position to follow up, and Delight, yeah, he will die, but he does the heavy lifting here to set up the damage dealers to actually get the work done. And Genji will follow so up with them. Relevant in these fights, they just did not have it. Now they will grab this turret here against Genji during. Baron, but taking their time with it for now. Yeah, a lot of turrets already removed from the map, so looking now to push this inner down in mid. Chovy pushing the top inner as well. That's going to push that power play much higher here, as you can see, trying to get all three inners. They're set up for it. Akali in the side. They could grab this one, then rotate over. They still have a whole minute left on this Baron, and there's just not much T1 can do here. They have decent wave clear, obviously, with this Orianna. So they're just going to have to sit back and lose their turrets here. And, and now they're trying to put the nail in the coffin on this one. Let's see how this fight does go as Pino trying to get away. Does get knocked for Gen G. This is very well set up for them to just take the Cloud Soul. And that they will. They're just going to take down the objective. And in the front is Owner. He's just going to get ripped to shreds immediately. Guma doesn't even get to do damage in this fight. And Zeus on the run as well. Taking a bunch in goes Guma trying to do something. But at this point, it just looks like Gen G are in total control control of this game and Faker just gonna walk away with just his life the rest of his team is gone the rest of his team is gone and this game I think likely gone with it and once again same MO from Genji control the choke point kite back to Baron put Delight in the front he looks like a squishy target maybe you could push push onto this recon but Delight will turn on you on a dime and they just cannot close the distance owner tries ultimately without Faker's help but like I was saying before everything needs to work together with T1 and if there's no vision if there's no choke point control you just cannot do it against Genji Oh boy, Faker trying his best, but I think Gen Z have their sights on the Nexus as a massive equalizer over the top. Just the cherry on top as Gen G 
dominate from about. Look for more single target damage. This is going to be a battle of G2 has a composition that can combo you in any fight. It's extremely simple. If you've got set up on an objective. Interesting to see if Weibo can actually collapse onto this one. Light eventually does make his way in. This is a very slow dragon that is going down right now and already uh, they're gonna get that poke on Han Salma and immediately G2 just gonna back away. It is one singular Cloud Drake. Pushing in a Broken Blade. Broken Blade playing this one very respectfully. He lets the wave push into him. I say that and now he's steadfast up straight into the Vi. The combo comes in. Can they take him out? Yes, they can. No flash, no hope for Broken Blade as the Shy and Weiwei put it together. And now with the all out, the Shy is looking for a little bit more. Now Caps coming on in here looking to get punished by Weiwei as a huge Wobble combo does come out from G2 though. They turn it around, but Xiaohu says no, he will turn it back, but he doesn't get too much damage, and G2 will end up with the win in this Person, fight. And every time G2 starts to win in a matchup that people are a little bit nervous yeah. about, you appear, and here we go, another fight. Vidius just appears right at the right time. G2 are winning, Vidius is here, and now G2 is here in the bottom side. Crisp is just gone as G2... But Weibo in a much better position for the time being. And the Kraken Slayer is picked up here for Han Sama, so he was able to, with that additional gold, he picked up bottom side. Shy is looking for something here, or at least the Shy is looking to punish, perhaps. Who's going to win out in this one? Broken Blade has we to. We often saw him go for the uh, Hull Breaker and be this sp uh, split pushing identity. Ooh, Han Sama caught out a bit here. He's stunned nearly 100 to 0. Finally goes into the Feather Storm. He's still alive, and he goes to the push. Light finally takes him out. That was getting pretty close to him getting away, but Weibo will be able to punish in the end. It's not able to respond on time. It's a double kill. See that even after that duo kill down on the bottom side, G2's bottom lane have just gotten too many advantages earlier on, besides, you know, going down eventually to light, that uh, they're just ahead. They take down that full. But I don't think they're really in a great position to do so. They have to walk through so much vision. The map is very dark, but Yike and Mickey will lead the way. They want this Herald so badly. It looks like they're going to try to commit anyways. Caps in position for an ult. But he's not going to commit. The Cassante, yeah. So they're just going to take this mid-tier one instead in the trade of this one. So, well, I say that. Immediately, Weibo able to rotate on over. And now they barely find Caps. He's going to get combo now. Shy in a little bit of trouble here as the Oni's on top of him. And he's just trying to get to safety here. But there's just too many G2 members that are able to hound him down in the bottom room. He's literally going top. And the Shy's like, I'm, I'm making a play, guys. The rest of Weibo weren't really on the same page. They couldn't really offer much assistance, and he ends up giving his life. Yeah, the uh, the Cassante power can be quite uh, aggressive sometimes. As now he's basically doing it again. He's in the front, but he's just going to go down for free. As Weibo, they're trying to get this dragon. Will they even do so? Yes, they will. The spike comes in, but G2, they're looking for more. Mickey on the engage. He does find Crisp, and that will be two kills into the hands of G2 in trade for the dragon. If you want to put a positive spin on it, the Shy dies in mid. They save the turret. The Shy dies around Drake. They are able to secure the Drake, which is sole point here for Mountain, which is going to be incredibly powerful for for this Cassante and how tanky is going to be later on. As meanwhile, oh boy, well, Shahu, he's been caught out. He's been found out, and it looks like eventually he will just go down to the turrets, try to give this kill over to the Rakan, and let's see if he can. Yes, he will. <laughs> but uh, Hansama looking to finally take this tower down. Nice flash. Oh yeah, he's going to get flashed on, and finally goes for the late eight ult once again. And this time it looks like he might just get out, but oh, no, nice. the residual damage comes in. They are spotted in some sense, even if it's a bit late. They're still going to go oh, for this, though. They don't have the flip this. Please don't flip they this. They have the rel. We'll see if they still want to flip it with this extra damage. As the Vi threatening there, the ult comes out, and Hansama is going to respect this one. Yike is getting pretty low in the pit, though. G2 find themselves uh, against the wall here as Weiwei is trying to threaten onto the Yone, and the first damage is there. They take out Broken Blade, and that might just be enough as Yike is left alone in the pit, and it's a disaster for G2. Weibo Gaming totally cleaned them up in the Baron pit. And that is going to be a huge leap for them. Sitting on them, Caps uses it at the end. He is, of course, going to escape. It looks very likely to escape here. Yeah, he's going to get out. But, I mean, those ultimates are what you need to turn. And that's the idea with this composition. You feel confident you can start give that up. Yeah, and already on this Red Bull Baron power play, about 4,000 gold already into the hands of Weibo Gaming. And now look at G2. They're all in the river. They want to challenge this one. Hansama has the cleanse this time around. But now he is down that for the ensuing team fight. Let's see if Weibo Gaming look for the turn or if they just want to get this mountain soul. G2 making their way into the pit. They go for the engage. It totally whiffs. And now Yike is 
alone as in the front here. Chris is taking a huge amount of damage. Caps gets isolated on the bottom side and he's gonna go down. The assassination potential of this Weibo Gaming composition. They're looking for more. They want Hansama. The feathers do nothing and Weibo Gaming are totally going to wipe them up in the bottom river. They will take them out in Seoul and now they are sitting on the throne of this game. It's over, it's done. Weibo just dismantled G2. They feel forced into this fight because of the Seoul and G2. It was around the Baron again, but unlike D+, there is no window, there is no opportunity. Gameplay, and they are just going to thrive in it here at the end of this game, so this is going to get pretty interesting. I mean, Broken Blade... Second major item. Caps now completed third, level 16 for him. Mickey. They are trying to go for something here as... Oh, just going to be Wombo Combo! They finally found the engage, and they take down one of the most important members. That's a double kill now for G2. They find a miracle engage, and this is right when the Baron is spawning. G2, let's see what they do with this now. I mean, the Shy and Weiwei here are gonna try to contest this. G2 took a lot of damage on that engage, but they have damage to rush this Baron down right now. Let's see what Weibo do. Every single ultimate has been used from G2. They have to find a way to keep Weiwei out of the pit. They gotta keep Weiwei out. They gotta keep the Shy off of their backs. This guy is like a juggernaut right now. Can you stop this Cassante? I'm not sure that the Baron is gonna go the way of G2, but what about the ensuing fight? They get caps on the top side of this one. He's the first to go down. Bit of an engage from Mickey X. A little bit hot. Sama trying to hold his own against Light, and he will be able to hold on to it. G2 are turning this fight in their favor after they get the Baron. And Weibo, it was looking potentially good with their tanky Cassante. Not looking so good anymore. The shutdown. Just one more going into the hands of Ansama. As Weiwei still on the chase, maybe just a bit of desperation. The rest of them are getting out as Yike might have to give his life for it, but man, G2 took a huge step in the right direction. That's two kills for Xiao Hu. Wrong with the Kaisa. So if Xiao Hu is down, yeah, you have this tanky front line with the Shy, but it's not going to be enough. Let's see if they can do exactly that. The Shy this time on the front lines, but Yike is right there, just waiting for it. But they might just have the damage. The engage comes in. Hansama gets that ultimate off, and the Wabo comes in in such a huge way for the strategy to so many low health bars. Cap's still alive, but Light has to go 1v3 right at the end. Can he do it is the question. The knockup from Mickey is just barely enough as the ball is in the front here. Caps will be able to take him down. The One opportunity for G2, and you see they clear out vision in the pit, but Weiwei decides to go in trying to catch Hansama here, and the wombo combo, you pointed it out, Valdez, the follow-up oh. is fantastic. It is nasty, and this oh. is exactly what we're talking about. We talk about circles, we talk about Yone ults, it all comes together here for G2. In Europe, we call that a 3K ELO shockwave. <laughs> Spectacular from Caps. He finds so many members, a triple kill for him. Coming up absolutely clutch for the team. Fantastic from G2. Gaming just grouped together here. They will sustain some damage, but it doesn't look like G2 is going to be able to end the game off of this alone, despite getting a massive swing in gold as well. They're still just a little bit behind. You can see how crazy this game has been. I mean, it, it's been just insanity. And at this point, G2, they're trying to get as much out of this Elder Drake push as possible. Now, G you if you get a pick, do it. if you get a pick, I mean, you can end this game. Weibo have to respect this and give this inhibitor up. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how G2 can manage this. Still 40 seconds on the push. Weibo, are you going to go for the pick? No, they just fight Xiaohu in the front. He's just going to be taken up for free. And look at the knockup from Mickey. They just get so much more in Hansama in that back line to Shy, trying to be the hero. But I don't think there's any heroes left on the side of Weibo. They do clear the wave, though. And that is going to give them a chance here. Some extra time for the Elder buff to fall off. 20 seconds left here for G2. Holy moly, they actually died the Nexus Towers to get that kill onto Xiao Hu. They're looking to end the game right now. I mean, Xiao Hu, he's been picked again. Here we go again. They get the knock up on the light. He's all alone. He gets taken out. That's going to be, I think, in his way way. He's getting burned out one second on the Elder Drake buff, and they don't have quite a wave. They got that one minion in the back as G2, they're trying to push on in, but respawns come out from Weibo, and Broken Lady, he's got a shield. He's giving it a chance. Another Stun comes out from Yike as Mickey doesn't get the knockup. This is just insane. As the Magnus Swarm is it enough for the side of G2? They say no, they're gonna back away. Xiao Hu's back. Xiao Hu, he respawns. TP! He's TPing. And oh. they want to turn onto this 
huge one. Xiaohu gets the Wombo and the entirety of Weibo's coming in. Meanwhile, the TP. in the base, they're TPing it out of this one. Gabs. Gabs, he wants to end the game right here. He wants to end it right now. He wants to take the 2-0 for G2. He doesn't have a health bar, though, and he's going to go down. Weibo Gaming, they hold on to the base. Oh Break down, God. but critically here, Weibo managing to, to clear the wave after Xiaohu's death. Once again, this all starts off with Xiaohu dying, which means a lot of that damage is removed. Kaisa just doesn't have the damage through, but it's the Shy who has to really force this. But keeping the minions out here is what buys enough time, because Weibo need to buy time for the Elder to go off. They need to keep these turrets up and then get Xiaohu's respawn. At this moment in time, it's 30 seconds until he's up, and they're able to pull off the defense of a lifetime here in order to pull it off, targeting down those minions as, minions as best as they can. Look at the Shy just on the edge of the Elder buff there. It times out, they make their last stand. The stopwatches were absolutely insane. The Shy does so much great work on the back line. Oh my god, the GA being procced by Broken Blade. It's just an incredibly fine line to walk. The fact that the both teams are playing on the edge Absolutely insane. I mean, we knew this one was going to be crazy. I, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> this is like next level, man. I mean, Wave of Gaming holding on, just barely clearing the wave. So important for them. They stopped the teleport of Broken Blade as well. If he actually gets that teleport off, maybe he and Caps will have enough to burn the Nexus down. Nice deny there. He'll be able to pick up some kills on the back of it as well. Caps, he tried his best, gets it down to a third health, but that's all he can do. What an insane game. I mean, that defense from Weibo was like a tightrope. You're riding a unicycle on a tightrope. That's how dangerous it was. That's how thin the margins were. And you can see G2. Mid by himself. Meanwhile, Caps is running at the base. He says, OK, you can take Elder. I'm going to take your base, but he's going to be hit. And uh-oh, he's got the stopwatch, the Zonyas, to help him live. Yike. Caught out on the bottom side. He's got his teammates nearby. He is so tanky on the rail. And the spoke damage so far from Weibo, not enough. Hansama trying to step forward. He gets hit, but immediately cleanses and will get out for now. Another one hits him as he Mickey, gone. Mickey isn't able to block for him. And Hansama finally decides to use that one. Here comes the Wombo Kama. They find Wei Wei. It's in enough. And Xiaohu goes in, but yike, he perfectly Let's go. able to get it done. He's perfectly able to keep his team safe. And G2, they're able to take the fight in a huge manner. Triple kill for Hansama. And they will win this game. Let's go, boys. Fantastic play from G2. They're going to look to end the game. What an amazing turnaround. It may be Hansama who falls early, loses GA, but he's able to buy enough time. And Broken Blade oh. finds the engage. No Inhibitor. Way. Inhibitor! Nope. Inhibitor! <laughs> no. It's over. T2 did it, and it's a, it's a fanfare on the stage now. People going insane in this arena. After about that. The stage atmosphere here, the coaching booth, the tension <laughs> that you love to see. This oh, is man. what Worlds is all about. Jumping up and down in the W, embracing, nice. because this is going to push you to 2-0 here oh, in Swiss. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> He's pulling off the Oni as well. In summer or in playoffs, so we'll be interesting to see what Knight can get done on this pick, as the final pick for Bin on the side of BLG is going to be Aatrox. So that is the classic Renekton versus Aatrox matchup. Back. Yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that, Wolf, because Kalista has been kind of getting bullied a lot in some of these lanes we've seen, and uh, obviously they've been a little bit different. So close. Looks that was miss. so close. And now soon he's just going to face chicken at night. He was looking for more as a huge one comes out from the Agao, and they just combo on a Kanabi who gets the bailout and will get the first blood here for the team. Elk goes in just to get one kill, but it's still big advantage JDG as this Vex is just popping off. Ruler going to pick up that, that dragon spawns. On just hanging out here. They know he's in this bush. I mean, there's only one spot. He just walked over a ward, and this Blitzcrank, it looks like he is down for the count. That's another kill given over to Ruler. Chains, and Ben will just run away or fly away from that one as another Drake. So this is two Drakes early. And it's Hextech. And it's up the pressure. Yeah, I think it's obviously a significant cooldown, but not the most important is Hook. Okay, this one on to Knight, who is quite low. He's got the stopwatch as Kanabi's going. He gets them both as he goes back into the flag and drag. That is a bit of a
Disaster 369, he's here as well. As down will go Knight, finally, that was the one pick they were looking for. But what about the other guys? Everybody's going down here on the side of BLG. And only Bin is left here. It's just going to be a straight up ace, is it though? Oh man, this is going to be 369 going down, but that's just a consolation prize. A triple kill for five. As it is going to delay a little bit of time, but JDG right here just chomping at the bit. They want to get over this wall and get this smite, and it is going to go the way of Kanavi. And that is three drakes now in favor of JDG, and they're looking for a bit more. They want to get the flash out of Yagao, and that they do bin on the right side. Wants to get something done, but the rest of the team is just hand shook and just zoned away. As Kanavi gets solo, but the core trigger value is huge, and Knight is in the thick of things. He's got this a chance to get back up and he is and ruler is just totally unchecked the entire time make it two more kills for this 80 carry oh man ruler is just popping off he helped carry the korean national team through asia games on the right side could have been a very different fight but it wasn't meant to be you mentioned how rare objective bounties are in our previous game in professional play at this level but this is the type of domination we are seeing at least blg will pick up some of that bounty gold here off of this turret but in the time it's going to take them to reset it's going to be a trade of turrets here the inner so valuable here for jdg with the lead they have a hook potential for on but he's not even going to pull the trigger knowing that that's just not the champion you want to pick right now two items seven kills yeah keep in mind this is 18 and a half minutes in, right? Like they are just taking elders, or not elders, not yet. Um, we'll just so incredibly limited. Yeah, take a look at the elixir as well. And the, okay, we're not even gonna have time for that. Yikau is just isolated. He might just go down. Kanabi, one more hit. But the hook on tonight was actually super key. They're gonna take him out as well. That's a one for one trade. Ruler's over the wall. He has to go in a stopwatch. He does not look very safe right there. And the flash over from Bin as the bailout will not be enough. It's a thousand gold into the hands of Bin as Kanavi is a bit of a juggernaut. He's looking for more. He is going to get one. As will he get more? How is this guy not dead? Where is he going? And he's looking for even more. 369. Here as well to stop the follow-up. And Ruler will ultimately go down here, but his stopwatch buys time. Meanwhile, well, we got more fighting. It's LPL versus LPL. Another hook is going to come in, but that's that's a croc. I'm not sure you want that one. He's got pretty uh, big health bar, but in goes Knight. He's looking for more. As on is getting pretty low on the right side here. Kanabi looking for this pick, and finally the space is emptied here for Ruler to just hop forward. Has been. He's got a lot of money after that shutdown, but it is not quite enough. Yagao and Elk on the run as Ruler will shut it down. And this is. JDG absolutely dominating. Now both objectives are oh, up. Knight. Okay. Nice little try from Elk, but he's got his Zonyas, buddy. I'm not sure you're going to be able to take him out, and Elk just runs away. Nice I mean, little pick, but not enough. You could call it a consolation prize, I suppose. You got the Zonyas cooldown. That's all you're going to get here. And JDG, they have so much. That Hextech Soul is also up. It doesn't get worse than this. 10,000 gold up. Hextech Soul, Baron. Good luck, Billy Billy Gaming. Yeah, good luck. Red Bull Baron power play, I think, is going to balloon out of control in this one. Let's see what JDG have in their pocket. But yeah, now a frozen heart. By the way, Spear Shojin was finished for the last two fights. Two levels up on Elk. It's a lethality, Kaisa, versus Frozen Heart. You aren't hurting this guy. It's not going to happen. And now Ruler is just going to rip this inhibitor down out of the base and they can look for more we're 23 and a half minutes in but this lead is just so huge oh on <laughs> he's he's looking for the hook it's understandable that's his that's his one function what do i do i, I hook the enemy team but it's just not enough at this point in time gdt we're gonna take down two inhibitors and it doesn't look like blg have what it takes to stop them and they might just look for more i mean we're only 24 minutes in but hextech soul baron coming on down and gdg want to end this one now Got so many minions, two cannons here, just pushing through the concede and wait. Talia rocks down here. Once those fade, the engage opportunities are real here for JDG. BLG, it feels like just waiting for the inevitable. Here comes Kanavi. Yeah, he's going on in, and again, I don't think anyone can really touch him except, uh, I guess, Yagao at this point in time. But Yagao, he's just dominated on the top side, and yes, missing is going to go down, but JDG, they're just playing with their food. They don't even need to fight BLG at this point. Knight goes in, he's having a ball in this one, and JDG are going to take down the best one. Best one against BLG. I guess it wasn't, uh, and they're going to use that to try to shut down. It's so good into Zion. It, like, is, it is amazing so into, good into Zion. Zion. And you know what else it pairs well with is Cataclysm from Jarvan. So you can set that up now. We will see the 
Uh, Sejuani to get locked. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. As uh, you were talking about those ganks, Deft is level six. He is going to get comboed here by Lahens and Ignited is going to use that satchel very late. Does flash onto the backside of it. In comes Guz looking to force it. And it looks like he gets it with the permafrost. First blood onto the Ziggs in the bottom lane as Cuz comes up with a huge gank. Oh, man. Deft teleport. And let's see if they can actually get it done. Lahens trying to threaten, but see the rest of the team is just backing away and they will give this one over. So DK. Andre's here. It's going to take time. But they can whittle away and he's got his ultimate as well. Yeah, they're trying to force the salt out early. Kellen is not going to hit it. He gets root down. We have the teleport coming in and Lehens gets the double knockup trying to get this one going, but that's going into a joke. They don't want to do that. Lehens getting pretty low and he is going to back out of this one. But KT take control of the river. DK considering getting on in here. Some low health bars on the Lehens and aiming and that's the bomb. Forces the Feather Storm, and now aiming does not have that ultimate for the follow-up engage from DK. Slow and steady wins the dragon here for D plus. Double the Andres, and they are chipping away at these health bars. Sure, Kellen's engage was very lackluster, but it won't ultimately matter. Oh, and they're looking for a bit more. Cousin Keen overextending quite a bit, and the poke damage is coming out here. Some low health bars. You talked about the Leandres. Finally, they are gonna find Showmaker in the front, but there's just no follow-up on that one. So DK. A lot of skirmishing here, and finally they commit onto the croc, but they don't take out Kellen. They don't have the damage to take him out, and it's three kills going. Sure, you lost the objective. It is Mountain Soul, which, by the way, you start stacking those up, you're going to be able to deal with a lot of that Ziggs poke later on if KT start winning. This. Now let's see. I mean, they're trying to make a stake for the second Rift Herald because is in the pit or he's nearby. Keen and Kana going head to head down on the bottom side here. BDD not sure who to support as Showmaker kind of in the same boat. Keen looking to turn off to Showmaker, but Keen is left all alone. They can't get over the wall. He's so far in there. The potential to just wombo combo your way back into a game from 9k down. Uh, we do know G2 were able to do that a little bit earlier on today. Um, DK definitely have a pretty similar comp. I think they may need a little bit more items in terms of this one. You got the Azir, the Ziggs, and the Jacks only sitting on their first ones for now. But so, that's so the rush. It's really difficult to actually aim that poke now, but it is landing. <laughs> There's the poke, it's coming on in over the top, but you can see some shields helping them along the way. Although the damage has been done. Kana also on the flank here on the right side. He's looking for that perfect angle, and KT don't seem to have any idea this is coming in. Let's see if he can find the perfect timing to go for this engage. Where is he? Okay, there he is. They finally find him, and now he's not able to get much damage done at all. Flashes, hops over the wall, just trying to gain some space for the team as DK. They're looking to take down this dragon, and they should be able to get it. Lahens not able to get in. Well, the matches, this game goes longer. You're dealing with double scaling AP threats with the Leandres, and KT don't have any Drake, so this game is super low. Looks like that's what he's going to do, but this buys so much time for D plus to now get on top of this dragon here, looking for Kana on the flank. We'll get his counter strike out here. Again, time working against KT. There's that teleport. And you can see the amount of poke that Depth is already putting out. BDD is back into the fight. They want to pull the trigger right now. They just got to go in. KT, you got to do something. And they're going to get the flash out of Showmaker. And that allows them to pick up this Mountain Drake. But in goes Kellen. Just going to go down for free. Not much that DK can do to follow up on that. The Satchel is nothing. There's a wall in the way. And a huge divide might help them out. But the Permafrost is coming out. And I don't think Depth is going to get away from this one. No Satchel, no hope as Canyon. Trying to get something done here. He's got Showmaker with a huge amount of damage, but this is 2v3, 2v4 even potentially, and they just stick around for way too long. Keen going to take him out with the help of BDD as Keen is still in there, and this game is going wild now. I mean, KT deny the dragon, but they're getting even more here. So many kills going over. And press I that poke in because that's really what they got to do, but they got to renect him behind him. They have no idea. Deft is in a lot of trouble. Satchel not going to be able to do much. Get stunned up and killed immediately as Lahens gets into the thick of things. And KT, they're going to find the fight that they needed this entire time. Double kill already for aiming. Can he line up the Penta? I'm already looking for it because we have so many. Kana, though, trying to get on in there. And unfortunately, he's just going to go down, gives the triple kill over to aiming. This game might have just ended in a couple of plays. Wolf. It looks like it. And once again, OK, they're going to back off. They're going to play it. Still going to be a play from Lehens that wins this for you. The knockup is fantastic. D plus just trying to hold on to their base. Didn't once again on the world stage. Oh, lost a little bit of the power we expected from them in our top three in the LCK playoffs, but coming back in a big way here against D+, and it's almost a 10,000 gold lead here now for KT. The kill difference is massive. This is what KT is known for, one of the highest in the LCK. I'm looking for a second inhibitor here. Any picks 
means certain doom here for D+, but they've got to do something to defend these turrets. They've got good wave clear, but it's just not going to be enough. Doesn't seem to be enough as Cuz and Lahan's looking for that engage. They'll find anyone. They're going to find Canyon as they go pretty deep for that one. The Aftershock may be saving Cuz, but at this point, the damage here is still 75 seconds left on Baron. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like that wave clear is there as Kellen's just going to be taken out on the bottom side. Lahan's finds another engage and Cuz just trying to front line here. The Baron buff just way too much for the Ziggs and Azir to handle, although did they overstep? BDD gets pretty low. Lahan's trying to give his life for him as in they go. Hukana just gets ripped to shreds. Saving is huge. 706. He's using that massive wallet right now to just shred through the entirety of DK's team. As Canyon, he's going to respawn, but you can't respawn. Your Nexus, Canyon, he's going to take the one kill. Does not matter. Aiming and KT will rip through DK and take this game.